Hi everyone, it's Gene Calderon here with Gene Calderon Apologetics Ministries. Uh, going through our theme days, we're trying to jump back onto these videos, uh, and I have a feeling we're going to be doing a lot of these in the days to come. Um, but just wanted to go ahead and continue with our themes. If you remember our themes, each day has a particular theme to it. Today being Monday, we are going to do what we call Messiah Monday. This is the day where we look at the Jewishness of Jesus and the culture that he lived in, the history of being in that culture, and what it meant really to be a rabbi or a disciple in that culture. I mean, it was a huge part of what Jesus did in his ministry. In fact, that was his ministry, is being a rabbi to the community and having followers or having disciples or being a great teacher. So let's look at some of those ideas about Jesus as a rabbi. I mean, besides pointing towards a deliverer, the scripture promises a king whose reign would be as glorious as King David's. So we read about this uh, in as a prophecy that the, the, the Messiah who would come was kingdom whose kingdom would last forever and ever. But the question we have to ask is, okay, well, what does have a king have to do with being a rabbi? And sometimes because of our disconnect about those two roles, we may not understand the connection. See, the scriptures predict that the messianic king would be a great teacher of the Torah. The Torah, again, are the five books of Moses. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. So the Messianic King would be a great teacher of those books or the law that is written within those books. And he, the king, being known as the first citizen of the nation, would be the living embodiment of the Torah and would also be a great teacher of that Torah or of the law. And even though he'd have access to all of his power and all of his influence into being the king, he himself would submit to those laws that are found in scripture, which is with him at all times. I mean, not only does he know this, not only is he teaching this, but he's also going to have a copy with him at all times. So instead of trying to live or be above the law, the king would be the best possible role model for living out and teaching the Torah, the law, the first five books of Moses. And this idea came from some of the qualities that we read about in the law itself, in the book of Deuteronomy, the fifth book of Moses' writings, in chapter 17. In Deuteronomy 17, starting at verse 15, it says this, Be sure to appoint over you a king the Lord your God chooses. He must be from the, among your fellow Israelites. Do not place a foreigner over you, one who is not an Israelite. The king, moreover, must not acquire great numbers of horses for himself or make, uh, make the people return to Egypt to get more of them. For the Lord has told you, you are not to go that back that way again. He must not take many wives or his heart would be led astray. He must not accumulate large amounts of silver or gold. And when he takes the throne of his kingdom, he is to write for himself on a scroll, a copy of this law, taken from that of the Levit Levitical priests. It is to be with him, and he is to read it all the days of his life, so that he may learn to revere the Lord, his God, and follow carefully all the words of this law and these decrees. See, these ideas were understood to be the picture of the coming Messiah, the great King of Kings, Lord of Lords, that they were expecting, and that that great Lord of Lords, King of Kings, Messianic King, would consume himself with the study of the scriptures and actually carrying a copy with him at all times so that the people would see he is a great teacher. He's very well versed with what the law is and in fact is embodying it, living it out. And we see that with Jesus. Jesus' life is almost scripted in the laws itself. And it's amazing when we start to see some of these things. And at the same time, he's not trying to seek his own glory. Um, the Messianic king would. He, he would rather intentionally point the people back to being obedient to God's word. Today, our society, we look at people and we honor people who are beautiful, who are wealthy, who are successful. Those are the people we look at and say, wow, I want to be like them. But in Jesus's time and even continuing into today, the Jewish people believe that becoming a great scholar of the scriptures represented life's supreme achievement. It represented life's biggest goal, greatest achievement. In this kind of culture that Jesus grew up in, it made sense that the Messiah would be one of the great teachers of the times. And it's no wonder why when we look at Jesus, and understand why he grew up the way he grew up studying and learning and at age 30 after his baptism started his ministry and goes on to be 
the greatest rabbi, arguably, that has ever existed, it makes sense that Jesus, Lord of Lord, King of Kings, would come down and be an embodiment of the scriptures and be a great teacher and would follow the word to the letter as an example, pointing everyone else to follow his lead as the King of Kings. So I think that's amazing. I think that's something we should consider. Uh, Jesus himself says, I didn't come to abolish the law. I came to fulfill it. I came to show you how this is to be done as an example. He knows we can't keep it perfect. He knows we're going to make mistakes, but he came to show us that this is the right way, not to abolish it, not to say you don't have to do it anymore, but you are supposed to do it. Follow me. Do it the way I do it. I think that's amazing that Jesus messianic king who was to come and is going to return lived that example out in front of the eyes of his people and it was recorded down for us to be able to go back and reflect on and learn from great teacher great rabbi lord of lord king of kings that's who jesus was jesus the rabbi so i hope that helps you again this is gene calderon we're looking at messiah monday today we'll continue to do these videos each different day has a different theme to it. And let me know what you think. Have you ever put together the idea of a rabbi with a king and seen some of the attributes on there? When you read through your scriptures, do you look at what a king is and what a king is supposed to represent or what a rabbi or what a teacher is supposed to represent? And do you see anything in common? Any differences there? How did Jesus do it? And so take a look at that. Let me know what you think. Put some comments on there. And again, I am a local missionary here in the area. If you'd like to support me, there is a link always uh, on there below. You, your church, your study group. If you'd like to be able to have any personal teachings or events or, or special presentations, we'd love to be able to do that when the time comes that we're able to do that again. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the little bell to let you know when notifications come in. And you will know every time I post a new video, I will be posting a lot more during these times. So um, it's not just apologetics, Jewish culture, things like that. It's going to be just anything. So be on the lookout. You'll enjoy it. I pray all is well with you and your family and your household. God bless you. Come back again soon.